Well, the SABC has proposed a number of changes to their TV license collection method as the organization continues to battle for funding. In a presentation to Parliament's Portfolio Committee on Tuesday, the National Broadcaster said it only manages to collect 30% of TV licenses, with 70% of TV owners defaulting on payments. Wayne Duvernay, the CEO of the organization Undoing Tax Abuse, that's Alta, says the public has been reluctant to pay TV licenses or levies as the purpose of doing so is not understood or appears irrational. Well, we have got Wayne Duvernay, who's going to talk to us. He, of course, is the CEO of Alta. We've also got with us the chairperson of the Independent Communications Authority, or ICASA, Dr. Kierbetswe uh, Modimoeng. Uh, all right, it looks like we're having a bit of a problem. I think we've got Kierbetswe with us. Kier, good morning to you. Greetings and uh, good morning to the viewers. Excellent. I'm glad that, you, that you're with us. In fact, we'll try and get um, uh, Wayne back on the line, but it's important to, to get from, Kisa, uh, from ICASA's perspective, what exactly is going on? There's been so much talk about what's going to change in some of the proposals, and South Africans don't actually understand the rationale of paying a TV license. Please explain to us why we need to pay a license and how relevant it is to the Broadcasting Act. So th thank you very much. I think as a departure point, we need to note that the SABC is a public broadcaster and not a state broadcaster. And as such, the public of South Africa enjoys you know, unlimited, unbiased coverage, which is then developed and transmitted in the public interest. Um, it, is a noble, it is a noble ask to ensure the sustainability of the SABC through the collection of TV uh, licenses. Now, now, it has been something which has been in place for, for a while now, and we do understand that a number of uh, new uh, proposals have been put forth, which of course, as the regulator, we can and we will support for as long as they are in law. Mm. Let's talk about some of these new proposals because I think that this is what really got um, uh, the public speaking is talking to the fact that the TV licenses from what, what the presentation said on Tuesday from the Department of Communications together with ICASA and SABC putting a new proposal forward to amend the Broadcasting Act basically saying that TV licenses only apply to TVs but what should happen now is that this license should now apply to mobile devices, different tablets, computers, whatever it may be where people are actually streaming any content, they should now be liable for a TV license. Talk to us about this. Yes, I think, uh, like I've touched, uh, when, when Section 27 of the Broadcasting Act was crafted, it was very specific uh, on, on, you know, which equipment allows, uh, in the form of television sets, of course, allows for the collection of TV licenses. Now, if uh, a discussion is about to, to begin, to look at, uh, you know, including smartphones, uh, including, uh, uh, you know, your over-the-top service, uh, uh, service or content providers such as Netflix and so forth, I think it's something which would need to be coordinated at the policy level, leading towards a, a process of legislative amendment. But from, from where we are, I think, in essence, the spirit of the act was to say, let those who consume content from the public, pro public uh, uh, broadcaster at least contribute to ensure the feasibility and sustainability of the public broadcaster. So I think the principle remains, but as to how it evolves, that should mm. be a public consulted process. Yeah. I mean, just uh, before I bring Wayne into the conversation, I believe he's on, on, online with us now, so we can talk to him. But, um, uh, uh, Doctor, I need to just ask you this question. Some people that are streaming, and this was the talking point, they don't watch the SABC. A lot of, a lot of people who were speaking to this, they may have things like Netflix that they do stream on their tablets and they don't watch the SABC. So why should they be paying a TV license for the SABC when they don't even watch that content? Yes, this takes us back to the point I just made that uh, it has to be a public consultative process because the act 
is very specific on the mandate of the public broadcaster and on the expectations of consumers of the public broadcaster's content to contribute in the form of TV licenses. So if we are going to then, you know, as a country, expand beyond that which is in the act, it requires to be consulted upon. Uh, but at the back of our mind, I'm, I'm very specific, as you did. at the back of our mind, let us uh, keep it uh, you know, in mind that we need to sustain the viability of the SAD. So I think as far as SADC's content and the consumption thereof is concerned, we may then need to see whether the act is adequate or we need to expand it. Netflix and all other over-the-top services would have to be made a discussion that would have to be entered into uh, separately. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's bring uh, Wayne into the conversation now. Wayne, I mean, there's been a lot of talk to the fact that, you know, when you look around the world, things like TV licenses seem to be a little bit outdated. In fact, in your opinion piece that you wrote, you you sort of reminisce to the days of when South Africa had radio licenses, where there was even a bicycle license that we had to pay for, which you know fell by the wayside, and that they just they just don't work. And from what we're seeing in terms of the public not really stepping forward to pay their TV license. It looks like TV licenses are outdated as well. But Wayne, let me get your views. Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, when you get to a situation where you are unable to administer your collection processes and there's a lot of pushback from society and you don't get the revenues uh, that you expect, then you have to rethink that uh, model. We've seen it even on, on, on ETOLs, and compliance levels drop below. Uh, the uh, ability to be able to collect, uh, then, then those who do pay get a little bit uh, put out by the fact that most of the people aren't paying. And it, it becomes a spiral downwards. And so you have to review the mechanisms of revenue and collection. Uh, and, and it would appear very clearly to us that the TV license revenue generating mechanism for the uh, public broadcaster is now outdated and we need to find new ways to fund it uh, if it's going to if it's going to survive because otherwise it's just going to require taxation bailouts mm, mm. i mean the, the, if we if we look at uh, some of the things that are happening right now i mean we've got the white paper acknowledging the fast changes in the media space i mean that is that is a reality things are changing at a very fast environment in the space um, if we amend things like the TV license fee, what do you think can be done? I mean, you also raise issues about the, the running of the organization, and that is also deterring people from wanting to step forward and pay their licenses. Wayne, this is to you as well. Absolutely. Um, you know, this is, this is what happens. Is, uh, I, I think the public don't understand the three-tier system and that there is a need for a public broadcaster where, we, where there's an education element to it, there's a communication and empowerment element to the public broadcaster on radio and television. Uh, and so it's necessary that it is there. The problem is though, that people don't watch the SABC or the public broadcasters uh, television uh, or radio and they feel like they're paying for something that they're not getting and that's, they're missing that point of the fact that they're actually contributing uh, to a tax uh, so that the public broadcaster can survive. But then in that, um, the public broadcaster also gets revenue from its sale of, of advertising, which is the bulk of its income, but it starts to lose that income because of the poor decisions. I don't have to remind you about the uh, the Flaudi uh, Monsoning era, uh, which lost a lot of revenue and did a lot of damage, which the uh, uh, the SABC is still trying to uh, cope with today uh, in the fallout that happened. And that doesn't do uh, the organization any favor, so it loses both advertising revenue and it has an exodus of, of people paying TV licenses. So now you've got to fix that. And what we are saying is that the SABC needs to have extremely excellent operational management uh, to get the trust of the people back because there was a time uh, and you recall the slogans the right thing to do where people proudly paid their TV licenses the compliance levels are very high you cannot lose the public and now once you've lost them it's hard to get them back so it's a complex matter uh, but the funding mechanisms now need a review the whole business model of the public broadcaster needs a review of its uh, of its revenue streams
So, I mean, you're, you're basically saying get rid of this TV license thing. It just, it doesn't work and it's archaic. That, that, that is the bottom line, what you are proposing. And find other ways, imaginative ways, to try and fund the, pub, the, the, the public broadcaster. Absolutely, because uh, it's on a downward spiral. At 30% compliance, I can tell you next year it'll be 25%. The year after that it'll be 20%. It's costing you a good 15 to 20% of the income that you're getting to collect the TV licenses. It's now time for a, a new model. The TV license, as the radio license has died and the dog licenses, bicycle licenses, it's time to pull the plug on this and you need to find uh, new ways to do it. But not just go and simply tax other revenue streams uh, that then fall into this pot. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we've seen that in the fuel levy. The fuel levy was introduced to, for motorists to contribute to road construction. Not a bad thing, but when it goes beyond that and the, the tax becomes just the general tax that goes into the pot and used for other things, then you allow you know, bloatedness to set in and inefficiencies to set in. These taxation uh, elements need to be very focused and very clear. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Modi Wang, we, we spoke to the fact now about this, the white paper on broadcasting and that this is open to public consultation. This is what it's all about, and that's why we're doing something uh, to, to public comment, why we're doing interviews like this. So it was released by the Department of Communications, and it talks about creating a level playing field between competing services, because the current statutory definition is too narrow and platform-specific to capture the range of new audiovisual platforms and gadgets. So we spoke about that earlier. Now, obviously, they're doing something right because they, they seem to be moving with the times, moving ahead. Now, I mean, the question remains, what is it that the SABC can do? How do we manage to stay viable? How have other broadcasters remained competitive and viable in this day and age? Yes, no, I, I, I think the first step, of course, uh, which is done just in broad general terms, you know, is uh, operational and managerial efficiencies, uh, which seems to be a problem uh, over time. Uh, the other question would be, uh, you know, uh, consistency in as far as adherence by the consumers as well, adherence to the payment of TV license, at least for as long as they are still in law. Uh, you know, I think I think w once once those can be tightened up, you know, the the production of exciting content uh, to draw eyeballs to the SABC screens, I think it would also go a long way because then there is correlation between that and uh, you know the search in, in advertising take up. So 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 I mean we are mindful of all of those, and I think as you rightfully note, the the white paper is out, which uh, requires. Uh, members of the public to really give input. Uh, you know, should, it, should we take it by a narrow definition of a television set? Uh, you know, when the act was crafted that way, a lot has changed. We are all holding smartphones on our hands, but are those television sets, uh, you know, the jury is out. So I think uh, what, what we really need to preoccupy ourselves with as society is to note that we cannot afford not to have a public broadcaster. I think that is also something, whatever approach we take, whether it's an e-toll uh, kind of an approach which I have had been cited or whatever, at the back of our minds, we must know that it is our responsibility as the public to ensure that we have a public broadcaster. Yes. And the TV license uh, intervention was one of those uh, yeah. measures put in place. Yeah, v very quickly, Dr. Modewen, we've got just a couple of seconds left. I mean, the SABC pays a billion rand annual distribution fee to Centec, but Centec actually used to be an SABC subsidiary. Uh, from a legislation point of view, wh why, why split? What informed that split? Yeah, I think there is a discussion underway, uh, you know, around merging and de merging of, you know, reconfiguring of certain entities of, of, of government. And I think that whole Centec SABC matter uh, might be also on the cards to be, to be rebooked. Uh, because, you know, Centec does not exclusively uh, distribute signal to the SABC as well. And I think that's something we also need to, 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 to bear in mind. So as to the, the, the intrinsics of the business case or model of Centec, I believe this whole merging and de process, which has been mentioned by the policy 
maker, which is the minister, is something that can perhaps uh, crystallize how we proceed. Gentlemen, I have to I have to pause this. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask you, if you don't mind, just staying to wrap it up um, after our news bulletin at 8 o'clock. But we need to take a break because we've got to say goodbye to our SABC2 viewers. So a quick break and then we'll have to say goodbye. We'll wrap this up on SABC News.